Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for the last day of September the 30th of 2018 here. Taking a look in the Atlantic, we have Leslie. Interesting system. It's a tropical storm. Going to kind of hang around for a few days, become a hurricane at some point, add up on the ace points, and that means the accumulated cyclone energy. And think of that uh, like what a team scores in a game, right? So, you know, you think about like the L.A. Lakers and they average, you know, 96 points a game or whatever. Or in a single game, they may score 104 points. Well, that's what the ACE index is. The ACE tells us kind of the score of the energy output for hurricanes and tropical storms and even subtropical storms anywhere in the globe and for the Atlantic Basin an ACE score anywhere from 95 to 105 depending on what you look at for historical background data is considered normal or average and so uh, Leslie here will add several ACE points over the next several days for what it's worth and some of that gets tracked uh, by people who follow the metrics, the nuts and bolts of a hurricane season, and it tells you a lot more about the energy output and the quality of what forms rather than the quantity. You could have 17 named storms and two of them become hurricanes in a very low ACE score. Um, on the other hand, you could have 12 named storms and four hurricanes and those hurricanes last for a long time and are very intense and you can have a very high A score. I know it sounds very boring but <laughs> that's trying to reach for something here about Leslie and what it's going to be able to do in terms of mattering for the long term. It's not going to affect any land areas but it will be a massive disruption to any shipping and fish fishing interest out here whatever that may be. I'm not really up on my maritime uh, commercial you know, shipping and fishing zones. I know south of uh, this area, you know, sword fishing is a big deal. Nevertheless, it'll be out there not bothering anyone on land necessarily. Maybe some swells will come out towards Bermuda over the next few days, so that's something to keep an eye on. So the big story is going to be Rosa in the Pacific, Hurricane Rosa, and here's the track map from the Hurricane Center. It's weakening right now, uh, as it's moving into a more stable air mass and cooler sea surface temperatures. Not so good in the thermodynamics department in terms of the energy that's available for Rosa, but a lot of moisture is going to be pulled up into this area. Uh, you don't see this very often, but it's not, it's not like it never happens. I went out here to the desert southwest twice in 2014, and um, I know my iPhone is going to beep again in a second. Somebody's messaging me. And I forgot to put it on mute, but that's okay. I think you'll hear it, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just anticipating the second reminder of whoever just messaged me. Uh, I went out here in 2014 for Hurricanes Norbert and Odile and um, saw some pretty impressive flash flooding up here in southwest Utah. Uh, Norbert, I think it was, created a big flood problem in the Moapa area. And even in Las Vegas, there it is in Las Vegas proper. Uh, anyway, this is going to be a big problem. A lot of rainfall, considering, you know, we're not going to have 20 inches or anything, but three or four, maybe six inches, and that's going to create a lot of flooding for the area. If we look at the satellite loop here from tropicaltidbits.com, there's Leslie, again, just a novelty, piling up those ace points. This is Sergio. Sergio is probably going to do something like this and then eventually come back also towards the southwest United States, but it's going to be a while before that happens. Here is the moisture coming in from Rosa, and already some convection popping up near Yuma, Arizona, because of the added humidity and instability of the atmosphere. And then we've got this upper level energy that's coming in over here, and this trough that will dig in, grab Rosa, bring it up into the region, squeeze out the energy, and dump a lot of rainfall across the area. Looking at that graphically, this is very important, you know, looking generally like north and west of Phoenix. So Wickenburg and between Phoenix and Las Vegas, Nevada, which is up here, 
that's where the heaviest precept looks to fall. But this is not a guarantee. This could be off, and the heaviest rainfall could end up over here somewhere. It's hard to know for sure. Also notice up here in southwest Utah, the St. George area, Snow Canyon, over towards Zion, and the awesome uh, parks in southwest Utah. That's an amazing part of the country. Slot canyons and elsewhere uh, could really flood quickly. So if you're hiking, you know people that are hiking, get in touch with them and let them know this is coming. All right, We don't need any loss of life due to this flooding because we know that this is coming well in advance. And so this is the swath. This gets updated a couple of times per day. And I will talk about it again tomorrow, even as I travel. I'm leaving tomorrow to come to Phoenix over here, and uh, roughly somewhere in there, and start You know what I do. I'm going to take a few cameras, a couple of GoPro systems, and re really try to document this and report on what happens. Uh, so we shall see. So today, this needs to be taken as seriously as a severe thunderstorm convective outlooks all right that we get from the storm prediction center all right you, you see those where you, we have a high risk or a moderate risk the chasers go crazy right uh, when you see that on the great plains uh even a slight risk which is outlined here for tuesday this is not for severe weather this is for flooding the risk of rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance is moderate right here in west central arizona tuesday on Monday, tomorrow, it's a slight chance all the way up into southwest Utah. And, of course, that includes southern Nevada, Las Vegas, Henderson, all right, Kingman, Arizona. Okay, this is very, very serious. We don't know exactly where this will happen uh, in terms of the heaviest rain. So you have to pay attention. And you got to remember that flash floods, debris flows, especially in burn scar areas, could be a big issue. So... If you're traveling Interstate 10, Interstate 40 through Flagstaff, uh, 93 coming up out of Phoenix, 17 or 8, all those highways out there, if you live out there, you know what I'm talking about. Be very cautious, especially especially the bridge here Monday night into Tuesday. All right, That's when a lot of this could fall, and there's not a window in here that they've put in for Monday night and Tuesday. What happens during that time? It's dark, right? And flash flooding at night is absolutely horrifying, very dangerous. So um, follow NWSWPC on Twitter. That's the National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center. And you can get these graphics. I will cite them. I will tweet these myself, retweet them, etc. Make sure you're on top of this information. Here's the uh, national map. The shift from the east here where the leftovers of Florence are gone. Mostly there's still some rivers that are draining and going down, still receding, and the cleanup effort and the just the nightmare of recovery for some of these people continuing. And we're going to address that a different day, uh, especially as I work on my documentary for the season and then one for Florence specifically. We'll get to that. But the focus now transitions to out west from, of course, a tropical cyclone that's going to come in through here. So this is a lot of area. Uh, it's vast and open and uh, you know sparsely populated to some extent, but you do have some big metro cities in there and some important corridors of travel as well. So please take this seriously. It's serious enough that I'm headed out there, and I'm not going out there to gawk and you know just look at it. I'm going to set up equipment to try to study it, you know, observe it first, study it later. That's what we do. And this is a big, big deal, so please treat it as such. The rivers, you know, I showed you this for Florence, out west, same kind of thing. You can just mouse over any of these, and it tells you information about these gauges. How do you get to this? Look, you can see that it's already forecasting a bump there as the rainfall comes in. Uh, lots of gauges over uh, these dry washes now, as well as the rivers and streams around Arizona. And this is true for everywhere okay not just arizona southeast nevada southwest utah uh, kind of sparse out here in the desert region of southern california uh, to the west or i'm sorry the east of la and vicinity but elsewhere lots and lots of these gauges and you can get there 
Uh, by the way, you go to the Weather Service homepage, weather.gov, then you click on Rivers, Lakes, Rainfall, and that takes you to this page here, and you just select Arizona or whatever you want, and there you go. You can drill down and really get in close. And just to give you an idea around Phoenix, okay, uh, a couple of these, the Salt River forecast to come up, getting towards action stage. And this is just based on predicted rainfall. Once it starts happening, then these gauges will respond accordingly. You know, this is, some of these I don't quite understand because it's a different area of the country. Uh, this one is really interesting to me, Jackrabbit Wash near Wickenburg. Uh, I'm going to put a, a camera system near this, I do believe, because I think this has the potential to really maybe go into moderate flood stage. We shall see. Anyhow, you get to this from weather.gov. Great information here from the uh, River Forecast Center out west. There's several of these throughout the country. Radar, just to show you real quick, it's starting down near Yuma and vicinity. Popcorn showers and thunderstorms, a little bit dense in its coverage. And this is the outer rain band of Rosa proper. This is just some of the moisture coming in and the heating of the day has allowed it to bubble up. So this will really start to fill in. Um, if you have our app on iOS, I will be updating the tracking section to include all the Rosa information. Um, if you have the Android version, it's not for sale on the Google Play Store right now because we're trying to test some things that weren't working to make sure they do work, and we're going to do that during this. Got some awesome people working with me behind the scenes. Either way, if you have the iOS or the Android version of Hurricane Impact right there, uh, fire it up starting tonight, tomorrow, throughout the week. And it's just like a hurricane mission, except it's the remnants of one in the desert southwest. And, of course, our Patreon members, uh, supporters there, our patrons. I'll be posting these little mini, almost like a video diary. It's really neat to be able to do that. And using the Patreon app, boom, I can put it right there for you guys to follow along, no matter what level of support you're giving, whether it's, you know, uh, the high end, which is very, very helpful, but everybody matters, so everybody gets in on that. It's just a, so cool what we can do these days, isn't it? I think so anyway. And then, of course, on Twitter, at Hurricane Track, I'll be posting information there regularly as well. i got to try to get some sleep tonight. The flight leaves in a little over 12 hours. <laughs> so good luck with that, huh? It's worth it, though. This is an amazing situation, uh, one that's going to be dangerous for people out there especially if they don't take it seriously or understand the impacts that are coming. Rainfall, rainfall, rainfall. I don't think it gets enough attention, and it's just part of my job to make sure we do give it the attention it deserves and put it in the proper context. So I'm going to try to do that as I head out there starting tomorrow morning. All right, well, that is it for me for now. Um, I'll do another update tomorrow evening. But as I said, follow along on social media. Uh, that's free, Hurricane Track on Twitter. The YouTube videos I do, those are free. And if you have our app and are following on Patreon, at least I can put more densely populated information, if you will, there as part of what I do for the service that I provide. All right? Have a great rest of your Sunday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. That'll do it for the month of September. I'll talk to you next from the month of October. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have more for you starting tomorrow as I head out west into Arizona.